Jesus, the hope of the hopeless. Today we'll be looking on Luke chapter 2, where Jesus is born, born in a very humbling place. We'll be also looking on the story of Corrie ten Boom from the hiding place where he was their hope in the hopeless situation. So Luke chapter 2, which is a faithful account, as faithful as it could be, of Luke, who is writing to his friend about the birth, life, death and resurrection of Jesus, the hope of the hopeless. So let's see what God has to say for us today. Luke chapter 2, verse 1, the birth of Jesus. At that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for this census. So that's probably one of the most famous stories if you're familiar with Christianity. You know, like from Christmas time when Mary and Joseph, when they had to, you know, go on the donkey to a town and then we know that Jesus will be born in a stable. There was no room at the inn, all those moments. So Joseph was on his way to register for that census. And they all returned to their own ancestral towns. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. Again, when, when I think of someone being a descendant, descendant of a king, I think of someone wealthy and in power and in privilege. But Joseph wasn't so. He wasn't privileged, he wasn't in power, he wasn't wealthy. He had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee, which was really a small, poor town. There wasn't much going on there, a small community in Nazareth. It wasn't the center of the universe at that time or of the area. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. Mary, we know that the angel appeared to Mary in chapter 1 and said, Mary, you are highly favored among women and you will give birth to a child and you will name him Jesus. And it happened. She became pregnant and about to give birth. So what the Lord says is true. Verse 6, And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son, she wrapped him snugly in st stripes of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. I like that. You know, yesterday I was reading a book. I'm finishing a book by Cory Ten Boom, The Hiding Place. If you never heard of it, I would recommend to just get a copy. Really so lighthearted story. Lighthearted, maybe that's not the way to put it. What I'm trying to say is that it's well written and it's an easy read. The story isn't lighthearted itself. It starts as a family story, Dutch watchmaker, you know, they're in the Netherlands, lovely family, Christian family, living for God, ordinary folk. And then the World War II happens and they are helping people being taken into the concentration camp and really having a hard time. And there was this person Betsy Ten Boom, and when she was in the concentration camp, she was starving, you know, she wasn't looked after, like from the medical point of view, she was sick and, you know, they were really treated badly. That's an understatement, but they were really treated badly. But she kept serving Jesus, she kept just loving people and praying for them and giving thanks in hunger, giving thanks in sickness, giving thanks in the most horrendous conditions you can imagine to be in as a human being, as a woman, she was in them and she gave thanks. And I was just, I just had to pause. And I went on the computer and I started writing and, and typing and saying, Lord, thank you, Father, thank you for giving us Jesus, the hope. Because she said that Jesus was her hope in the camp. You know, Jesus was the hope of the hopeless. And I said, Father, thank you for giving us Jesus, the hope of the hopeless. In that concentration camp, also there was a story when she was shoveling something, it was a line of the women, they were shoveling, doing some manual labor. And by that time she was, you know, several months in, in those camps, weak, you know, hungry, starving really, you know, sick. She, she, she could barely leave the shovel itself, so she would take just little pieces, you know, little bits and shovel them. And the guard came, ridiculed her, took the shovel off her, was mocking her and making fun of her. And she just said, yeah, that's me, that's okay, you know, and that's who I am. Maybe you want to take me off, off the job. The guard got really upset. She hit her really, really hard. And 
you know, and she hit her really hard and she started bleeding, you know, and she started bleeding and her sister was with her. She wanted to jump on the guard and protect her sister, but her sister stopped her. She said, no, don't look at this wound because now blood started dripping from the wound. She said, don't look at this wound. Look at Jesus. Look at Jesus. And that just, that's just the summary, you know, that they were in the middle of the hardest times, you know, for people in the modern history or in the recent history. And she was like, look to Jesus. He was their hope. They had church gatherings in the barracks. They would pray, read the Bible together that they smuggled in. He was their hope. And I love that Jesus, even though he was God himself, he was the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He was born in a manger. He was born and there was no lodging available for them. He wasn't born in a palace. He can understand, you know, what rejection means. He can understand what hard times are. He can emphasize, he's the high priest that can emphasize. So that's something that I would like to focus today. Jesus, the hope of the hopeless. And I don't know if you have any hopeless areas in your life, but if you do, Jesus is the hope of the hopeless. I would like to pray now actually for you and for me for Jesus to be the hope in the hopeless situations. So Father God, I thank you for the day, for the example of Betsy and Corrie ten Boom, Father, that in the concentration camps, they saw Jesus as their hope. And I ask Holy Spirit, Jesus said that you will guide us into the whole truth and remind us of his words. I ask, remind the, persons, the person watching and remind me also today in the hopeless areas of our lives, about Jesus, the hope, the one who can understand, the one who knows, the one who is able to help and get us through those times and be with us in them so we can shine his light even in the darkness. And that's in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus, the hope of the hopeless. Thanks for being here with me and I hope you'll have a good rest of the day. See you in the next one.